Joining me now are three MPs from the different parties. Francesco Sorbera is a Liberal MP for the Toronto riding of Vaughan Woodbridge. Stephen Ellis is a Conservative Deputy Health Critic and the MP for Nova Scotia riding of Cumberland Colchester. And Taylor Backrack is the NDP member for the BC riding of Skeena Bulkley Valley. All three of you, thanks uh, and welcome to the show. Good evening. Let's, uh, let's start with you, Francesca Sobera. Um, the biggest change in this announcement today is this mandatory testing at the airport for travelers coming from anywhere but the U.S. How do you think Canadians are going to respond to this new measure? No, th well, thank you for that question. I think first and foremost, uh, we know as a government, all Canadians know that uh, the pandemic, uh, the top priority for all governments is the health and safety of all Canadians. And we continue to monitor the evolving situation that uh, is confronting not only Canada, but all, all countries. Uh, yes, today, as a part of a number of uh, prudent measures announced, uh, anyone flying in, into Canada not only will have to take the pre-departure PCR test, but landing at, uh, the, the, at an airport in Canada, they'll have to do an arrival PCR test. And it's just another layer of protection that, we, that we're putting into place Obviously, again, reflecting the evolving situation uh, with regards to uh, the pandemic. It's Canadians keeping Canadians safe, first, first and foremost, ensuring that we can continue to recover, but the health and safety of Canadians remains our top priority. Okay, how do you think people are going to react to it, in a word? Well, I, I, think, the, 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 I think Canadians will react very positively. The, first off, the, the cost of, of, of taking the PCR test when uh, individuals arrive at the Canadian airport uh, say, for example, in, in Toronto, GTAA, uh, will be borne by the federal government. Okay. It's just, it's another measure, and it's a very prudent okay. measure uh, that reflects the change in circumstances, but also is ensuring the health and safety of Canadians is our top priority during this pandemic. Okay, Stephen Ellis for the Conservatives, your reaction to the measures, additional measures announced today? You know, I, I think one of the things that we're concerned about it as Canada's Conservatives is understanding the very slow rollout that the Liberals had at the beginning of this pandemic. And even with this new variant, the big concern that, that we had was Friday morning, we had to make statements to help guide this government. And for us, that's in a word frightening. You ask for a word. And I think the other thing that concerns Canadians, of course, is are we going back into lockdown stage? We know that the uh, the economy can't stand that anymore. We know that the stimulus that the government has provided has caused significant amounts of inflation. And when you look at those things combined together, as I said, the word for Canadians uh, is, is frightening. But the measures themselves, you have no problem with what has been announced? You welcome what has been announced? You know, as I said originally, uh, I think the big thing is Friday morning uh, that the comments that we came out with very early in the morning were those that the government has adopted. Uh, and any time that the government adopts the position that we've suggested to them, of course, uh, okay. we would be fair. Okay, on behalf of the NDP, Taylor Backrock, what do you make of this and your reactions to the latest measures? Well, we need to ensure that uh, as a country, we're acting in a way that's precautionary. I think that's the biggest thing. Uh, Stephen mentioned the, the uh, quickness of the response, and, and that's so important. Looking back on the, the first wave of the pandemic, there was a lot of criticism that Canada's response at the border wasn't uh, rapid enough, wasn't decisive enough. I think we've seen an improvement, actually, this time around. But now the onus is really on the government to explain you know, why certain countries are being added uh, as opposed to others. And we need to be talking about the bigger question here, which is that with the arrival of uh, on the scene of Omicron, um, it's, it's really underlining the fact that nobody in Canada is safe until everyone around the world has access to vaccines. And, you know, it's, it's inexplicable why Canada continues to oppose the patent waiver at the WTO that is one of the, the things that will help get vaccines to people in developing countries and protect everyone around the world. So that larger international picture is very important, um, even as we deal with the immediacy of these border measures. Okay. Uh, Fra uh, Francesco Sobera, I want to ask you that to a double barrel question. First of all, one of the things as we're going, seeing as we're going back to earlier in the pandemic, one of the biggest problems that your government faced was that you didn't seem to uh, allocate enough resources at the airports. We all have memories of the uh, Ontario, Quebec and Alberta governments sending testing teams to their airports in Calgary and Montreal and Toronto because there weren't enough resources. Are there going to be enough resources for this in, uh, in airport testing and also the wider issue of vaccine equity and, uh, and trying to encourage the W to waive intellectual property rights? 
Uh, th thank you for the question, and thank you, Taylor, for, for uh, his comments. First of all, with regards to vaccine equity, we know, and every, going, every government knows that, that we will not defeat COVID and we will not defeat this pandemic until every country has access to the vaccines and get their po and can get their populations uh, vaccinated. We, we understand that, and we're obviously we've committed, I think, it was $2.5 billion in terms, in terms of helping internationally. Uh, for the COVAX facility, another 200 million uh, vaccines will be donated to that uh, facility. Canada has been at the forefront internationally in working with our international partners, whether it's in the G7 setting, the G27, and, and further settings, in ensuring that countries around the world can vaccinate their populations. We, we are there at the table uh, with real resources. Secondly, uh, in terms of comments uh, that was made around, we reacted swiftly on Friday. Uh, we reacted prudently right. uh, to the, the evolving situation with regarding to the pandemic, and we put in very place okay. very prudent measures. What about the other question, though, about resources? I'm just going to cut in. What about resources? Because people, are we going to see bottlenecks at the airports? Are we going to see long waiting lines? I think what you what you will see over the next uh, the next days to come, as we put in place these measures, are uh, the necessary and sufficient resources to keep Canadians safe, to ensure that we can keep our economy open, we can keep Canadians working, and that we can keep uh, going on the way of a recovery. It's very very important. We will have the, the necessary resources in place that Canadians can be uh, confident. Uh, that testing will take place expeditiously, that, they'll, that they can go home uh, very quickly, await their results, and then, uh, you know, okay. proceed to their daily activities. Okay. Absolutely. Stephen Ellis, any questions still outstanding for you in terms of this issue of this new variant and the measures? Well, I think there's uh, very many questions that need to be answered and answered quickly for Canadians. We need to understand, uh, is the vaccine still going to be effective against the Omicron variant? Uh, what is the likelihood of community spread with the Omicron variant? We also need to understand very, very clearly uh, what is the uh, likelihood that people are going to be hospitalized or end up in the ICU due to this variant. Those are questions that are going to be very, very important to Canadians. I also think that the other questions that are important to Canadians that we need to have answered are why did the Liberal government take 1.6 million doses out of the COVAX program? Uh, why is there this significant amount of uh, inequality with countries that, that are uh, in developing nations. We need to have those questions answered uh, and we need to understand very clearly why the government is not uh, ameliorating this situation. I think the final question that we need to answer when we talk about agility is we are now attempting to vac vaccinate children in our country and we need to understand are we going to have the resources to also continue to vaccinate uh, with a third dose those people who are vulnerable populations. So those are outstanding questions that, okay. again, I'm very concerned about. Okay, Taylor Backrack, a last word to you. Anything outstanding? Uh, Mary Ng, the uh, international trade minister, and Francesco Sorbera uh, saying that Canada is leading, they say they're playing a leading role on the international, ski, uh, in the international s scene to try and further with the waiving of international property rights and, and get more vaccines available. Well, here's the reality. We continue to, as a country, Canada continues to oppose the uh, patent waiver at the WTO and the United States under uh, President Biden is supporting that waiver. So I think there's some explaining that needs to be done on, on why we're, um, you know, still uh, acting as a barrier to getting those vaccines to developing countries. The second question um, is in these new border measures, uh, you know, the, the treatment of travelers coming into Canada from the United States. And, and obviously the measures uh, announced today uh, don't apply to, okay. to folks traveling to Canada from the United States. Okay. And I think there's some questions around that as well. All right. On that note, obviously we'll be discussing this more. I want to thank all three of you for taking the time. Thanks for speaking with us. Thank you, thank you so much. You.